So let's now, let's now look at how we can add functionality to our class line. So up until now, everything here is public, and we use position and color as arrays over here. Now what we want to do in the main function is not know that line.position is an array. We want instead to get a function, for instance, that returns us the y value for a particular position, x position in the line. So in that case, we want to have it as a function rather than as, than as a implementation specific type. So in this case, we want to have an accessor that says the position at x position uh, uh, i is then this particular one. So we could even say this is the y position that we get then for our line. And the same for the color. Instead of knowing that the color is something um, that uh, is accessible as an array, we basically say that uh, we get the color at uh, position i. And the fact that we have to do this plus one is also not entirely nice. We could do this later on as well. So let's first go and implement those as functions. As we've seen already, if we want a function, then we can um, implement the function as part of the class. So in this case, our functions are both going to return shorts. One function we called ypos, um, and therefore ypos has a particular, um, let's call it x value that you need to give, and it will return the y position for that particular coordinate of the, of the line. And the same goes for other color. So we can get the color, And uh, for this x coordinate, we can get our color right there. So here we need to return the y value for x in our line. That's basically what defines the, the how our, our line should be drawn. And here we turn uh, the color for x. When we implement those, we've seen already that we implement them just as we would normally do a, a function. So if you would normally would, um, uh, define the function get ypos, you would do it exactly like this. With the curly brackets, you basically define what this function is like. The only thing that is different here is that with uh, the line and the double columns, you basically say that what happens here is that this belongs to the class. And what we return in this case is the i'th position um, in our array position. So this is basically saying that the, uh, or defining what we are going to return. The same we can do with color. So when we say get color, we basically define our function as we would normally have it and we return uh, the exact color for that position. So we say return i. Now here we could do this plus one. Oops, return, I made a mistake there. To having to avoid adding this plus one over here, for instance. So in that case, what get color delivers is immediately something that can be used by color pair and therefore the attributes. It makes it a little bit nicer later on as well. So now instead of knowing here while we are coding, with our object line of class line. We don't know this is really an, an array. It could also be something completely different. We just get our position, our height position of the line, and we get our height color of our line. And this will basically return and be usable. Now, the only thing that is still impossible to do, since we have here everything public, is that we want to encapsulate only um, the, the functions that people should use and not what people should not use. So this here, at the end, the position and the color arrays is something we want to hide from the user, just like we've done it uh, up until now. This is not entirely successful because if we do it now and we want to execute our, um, our program, then it will definitely end up with errors here because suddenly line.position or line.color are private members that cannot be accessed anymore. So for that, we need to do all of this initialization 
of position and color somewhere else, somewhere inside the line class. And we're going to see this is possible. And this is possible to do as part of a constructor of a class. And a constructor of a class is yet another function that is public, but it does not have any return type, not even voids. And it basically is identified like this. So this is our constructor. The constructor is a function just like the other two. So let's immediately say that we have a function here without any return type that is called line. And line over here will start to implement exactly what we do here. Namely, as soon as an object is created, in this case object line of class line with a capital, we basically execute all of this code right here. So as you can see here, we basically fill in position and color. And in our main program, we basically use over here a line. And when we use something of the line, we basically return the position of our line and return the color of our line. Everything else has become really simple. So we can execute this and see whether this works. Whoops. I have an error in line 29, oh, of course, here. So I'm returning i instead. It should be in x, of course, and the same here. And also here, our line is, of course, not known yet. In fact, we use the position of the class rather than the instance because the instance uh, is not visible. So basically, when we have our constructor, that was a bit too fast here, um, we, access, we can access position and color because our constructor is a member function of class line. And therefore, we can access these things um, just as we would access any other variable over here. So let's try that again. This works. And if we execute line, we have immediately this over here. Okay, so now we have encapsulated everything that belongs to our line. So these lines here up until line 34 as part of what is code that belongs to our line. Whereas the code that belongs to our main function is just here. It describes how we're going to draw everything and what we're drawing up but all the properties of our line have been completely encapsulated. So we don't know how our line is really implemented in terms of how we store all the positions of the single dots that make up our line or how we store the colors that make up our line. Not even how this line is initialized. We just hope that this is somehow um, done. So the only thing that we need to do here is add a comment that says we create a line and we can use this particular line as it was before and it's a squiggly line because um, that's the way this line has been defined right so this is kind of a very simplistic example of how a constructor and member functions and data can be defined within a line so as again we encapsulate the fact that these private members are not visible outside the class. Inside the class function, we know, for instance, that position and color are arrays. However, if we use the line class here in the main function, we never know or would know that this is implemented with arrays at all. And this will have huge benefits later when we don't want all of that knowledge because it is too complex to deal with. We just want the functionality of the class. We just want to create a line and then see if we want to create the whole screen or draw the whole screen, whether we are on that line or not, and which color this line point, this particular line point has. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of functionality to line. Um, we've seen now that we have this big class over here now we're going to add one more function before we're going to divide those into different files. And this one function is going to be a 
public function, of course, because we want to use it from our main uh, function. And it's going to cycle the line so that new data becomes available. What I mean with that, you'll see in a second. So I'll define a new function that um, will cycle the line and add a new point. That is what's going to happen now in the new function. Um, the function is not going to return anything, so I'll just return the void. Note again that this is not the same as a constructor. A constructor really has nothing there. And we'll call it cycle, I think, is a, um, a good name for that. And it has no arguments either. So it basically is just something that we can invoke, where we say line.cycle, for instance. Um, we can do that right in the beginning of our while function. Um, so for instance, here we say line.cycle. In this case, our line cycles through and a new point became, becomes available, as if the line that we had was scrolling from the right to the left. And then here we draw everything. And at the end, we basically look for our user interaction. That's all we have in our while loop uh, for our main function. Now we just need to implement this cycling. Let's do that right here, for instance. We have a bit more space here. So as I said, we basically add this as a member method or as a method from the, uh, from the, class, from the class line and we call that cycle. No arguments whatsoever, so we don't need to um, the return per se anything and we can basically just do something here. What we're going to do here is something very simple. We're going to create a for loop which goes from um, zero and cycles all the way until i is the same as um, our calls minus two in that case. That is the last point. So it will cycle up until the very last element of the line for the values and it will then update with new values. So we have our position. Uh, so for the zeroth position, for instance, we take the, the value from position one and add to that, just like we've did here, a random value that we force to have between um, zero or zero and uh, two, basically zero, one or two, and, and then we do minus one, so that we make the next point again connected to the previous points. And this is for everyone, so not just for zero and one, but for i and i plus one, as we've done before. And we're also going to do the, exactly that for our colors. So also here the color at the i position gets the color from the i plus one, plus first position. There we go. So now we cycled all the uh, data points of line and shifted them by one. That is in essence what we've done here. Um, and what we do with the new point is basically exactly the same. So for position, calls minus one, we have to add still something, and for color, color uh, calls minus one, we have to add a new value. And for that new value, we're going to do exactly the same thing as we've done here. Oh, actually, this is wrong. This is something I wanted to do right here, because what I wanted to have here is actually the color of the previous one, whereas here, I want to have exactly the same values as the previous. Um, uh, the previous position, so, but then plus one. So I want to shift the line to the left, one to the left. And it means that new data becomes available on the right, and this is now what we're going to add. So we're going to take the, the one that was previously there, um, right, which is here, and we're going to um, add something to that. So we could actually just do this, delete this, and say, as we have up there, random 
modulo of 3 minus 1. So in that case, we add to the position that we already have something, and we hope then that we basically uh, get something that is only one distance or um, at most one distance away. And for the color, we can just add a new random color, as we've done up there as well. So we add random modulo 3, and that is it. So now we shifted all the line data points to the left, and for the new available, we just create something random. With this being, um, making sure that this random thing is added to what was there previously. Right. And with this, we can now create something that is a little bit more interactive. Because what we've had up until now is um, a main function that is very short. This is still quite short, I would say. Where we first cycle through the line. We add uh, one data point to the line and the rest is being shifted to the left. Then we draw everything as before, and then we get our user input. And as long as this is not Q, we keep on doing this again and again and again. This is why I wanted to have this in the while loop anyway. So first we'll see whether this is working. Um, it is compiling. And if we now type in numbers, you'll see that the line goes from the right to the left. So I really advise you to try this by yourself. Um, I think this is making it a lot clearer what arrays do, um, what the advantages of classes are, etc. And the fact that you can use this, for instance, to draw a squiggly line like this, is just the beginning. Because after this, uh, we'll use this, for instance, for some game mechanics to, for instance, have a scrolling background. But more about that later.